Okay, so let's talk about the very first graph, which is called frequency histogram. So what is frequency histogram and how to construct a frequency histogram? Well, a frequency histogram is a bar graph. So very first thing that you need to note is that this is a bar graph. You'll see bars in this graph and it represents the frequency distribution of a data set. So a simple frequency histogram shows frequency distribution of different classes. The horizontal scale is quantitative and measures the data values, whereas the vertical scale measures the frequencies of those classes. So we put the classes on horizontal scale and we put the frequency on vertical scale. And number three is that these are consecutive bars that must touch with each other. That means histogram is a uh, is a reflection of continuous data, that the bars touch with each other, there is no gap between the bars. And what if there is a gap between the bars? That is not called a histogram, That's a, that is called a bar graph. So bar graph has a gap between the bars, whereas histogram does not have any gap between the bars, okay? So class boundaries are used in order to construct a histogram. Next, we're gonna see that how we construct these class boundaries from class limits. Okay, so this was the problem that we were working with. You can see that 18 to 25 was the first class where 18 is the lower class limit and 25 is the upper class limit. Remember? Now, what if we want to convert uh, these limits into class boundaries? And there's a difference between class limits and the class boundaries. Class limits have in class limits are intervals. What are intervals? For example, you can see that after 25, you don't have any value before 26. So there is an interval between 25 and 26. Again, there's an interval between 33 and 34. But, but class boundaries are continuous. Why they are continuous? Because they don't want to leave any gap between them. And we will see that how this happens. Now, what we need to do is we deduct a half point from the lower class limit and we add that half point to the upper class limit. How we do that? You can see that we deducted half point from 18 and that became 17.5. And we added that half point to the upper class limit and 25 became 25.5. Again, 26 would become 25.5 because we are deducting half point from 26 and we are adding that to 33.5. Same with other classes. We have converted the class limits into class boundaries. Now, there is one important thing which I want you to realize here. If we convert 25 into a class boundary, 25 is a number which starts from 24.5 and it goes to 25.5. But what if the number is 1.5? So remember that 1.5 starts from 1.45 and goes up to 1.55. So you detect half the point of the last digit and you add that half point to the upper class limit, right? So this is the way we conduct uh, class boundaries. We prepare class boundaries. And once we have prepared the class boundaries and we have frequency, we are ready to prepare a frequency histogram. Now we're gonna draw the frequency histogram and this is how we're gonna draw the frequency histogram. First, we will draw the horizontal axis. Here we have the horizontal axis. And what we have on horizontal axis, we have ages. As I told you, we put classes on the horizontal axis and here the classes are about ages in years. And then on the vertical axis, we have frequency. Next is that we have to draw bars. So. Uh, what we have here is 17.5, 25.5, 33.5, 41.5, 49.5, and 57.5. And if you remember, these points, they come from these class boundaries. So the very first class boundary, the lower class boundary of the first class is 17.5. And the upper class boundary of the last class is 57.5. Look at this graph. This starts from the lower class boundary of the first class and ends at the upper class boundary of the last class. So we have all the class boundaries on this axis, x axis. Right, next we have frequency, which starts from zero and goes up to 14. 
why this scale goes up to 14 and why not any further. Look at the data. The maximum value here in the data is 30, which means it is one less than 14. So when we construct this frequency bar, we have to make sure that this is exhaustive, which means that it can contain all the frequency values. So the maximum frequency value is 13. So anything less than 13 should be here. So maximum value should be 13, but if we have 14, so we are trying to be on the safer side. One more thing you can see that we have divided this scale into points and each point contains two points in it. So first one is at two and next four, six, eight, and so on. So next is to construct these bars. So we constructed the first bar and the bar has a height of 13 because the frequency of the first class was 30. And you can see that this bar, this bar represents a particular class which starts from 17.5 and 20, goes up to 25.5. So you can go back to data and look at the data. The first class is basically starting at the boundary of 17.5 and going up to 25.5. So the next class starts from 25.5 and goes up to 33.5. And this thing makes it a continuous state. Okay, so the next class has an, a frequency of eight, so the height of the bar would be up to eight. Next, four, three, and two. So this is how we construct bars for different classes. And you can see there are one, two, three, four, and five classes, and we have five bars in the histogram. And all are adjunct, adjunct bars. There is no gap to them. So this is how you construct a frequency histogram. So I want to, I want to give you uh, some caution here. You have to be cautious about this. Always mention the labels of the axis. Always mention that what is on the x-axis and what is on the y-axis. Then always prepare a proper scale, right? Then always start uh, with a gap between zero and the first lower class boundary. Always have a little gap here. Okay, so these are a few questions that you can take in order to prepare a good histogram. Okay, the next graph is frequency polygon. 